what we're talking about today is uh, Canva branded templates and um, how you can set yourself up with a Canva branded template uh, and really create your own brand, your own look, and then easily apply it and adapt it to all of the different marketing that you're going to be doing. Um, we're gonna have a fun one today. For the folks, while we're doing that, while we're all getting this set up, let us know where you are joining from in chat. Um, I, I mentioned earlier, I'm here from the beautiful Burlington, Vermont. Craig is joining us from? Stewart, Florida. We probably did hear yeah. that before because your mic worked, but you know. Um, so <laughs> Craig's joining us from the beautiful Stewart, Florida. Um, and, uh, you know, we are going to have a fun time today. So let us know where you are joining from. Now, I do want to mention one thing here before we jump in and a quick shout out to both uh, the organizations putting this on. First is the Real Estate Technology Institute. Uh, Craig Grant is a founder. I'm an instructor over there as well. Um, great, great organization. If you're interested in anything to do with learning technology uh, and marketing in your business, definitely check out reti.us. Um, great, great resource. Uh, if you don't have an account, you should sign up, but your association might already have it as a member benefit. So it never hurts to check in with your association to see if this is a free tool that is uh, accessible. If to they you don't well. have it, recommend it. Because that's the other yes. thing. We add new association partners all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. If you don't have it, uh, let your association know to reach out to Craig. And uh, you can absolutely uh, get that. It's it's very reasonable for associations to bring this on for all of their membership. So uh, definitely yep. check that out. The next thing is Service for Life. Uh, that is my organization. And uh, this is a great, great tool that agents have been using for over 20 years at this point um, to create a 100% referral and repeat business. And it's always really incredible uh, to see when agents get to a point where they don't have to chase leads and they don't have to, you know, struggle and all that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in that, uh, check out serviceforlife.com. Um, and a big shout out to these two groups for putting on this whole workshop series. Now that's going to bring me to the workshop series itself. Craig and I do these about three weeks uh, out of a month, and then we have a master class. We'll tell you more about the master class uh, that is coming up, but we do those about once a month. So we're always doing fresh new content, um, and uh, we have a fun month coming up. This is the last in the workshop series. Uh, then we have a master class, and then we're going to get into a whole new theme for the next workshop series. So we do want to ask you uh, if there are top topics. If there are things that you are interested in that you want to know more about, um, so on, let us know as well. Uh, we are always yeah, looking for new topics. Example, over the last couple of months, we've done Google, we've done Canva, we've done video, we did uh, social media. You know, so if there's certain topics out there, and we could always repeat one, but if there's a topic out there like, man, I'd love to know how to do this, time management, whatever, security, uh, just let us know because we're always trying to look for new topics to do each month yep. uh, but more importantly we could just create topics we want to create topics that we know that are in demand that you guys are wanting absolutely it's all about helping you and helping you succeed in your business so give us some guidance tell us what you need all right you credit uh <laughs> all right craig are Freddy. you credit i am are you credit <laughs> craig are you ready to dive on in um today we are going to have a lot of fun uh, give us a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, sure. So we're just going to start with a very quick overview of Canva itself. Um, at this point, most people that attend these at least know what Canva is. But just in case you don't, we'll give you a very quick overview of it and also Canva Pro, which is the paid version. Uh, and then we're going to teach you about the basics of creating a brand, what a brand really is. I mean, it has to have consistent look and feel and color, stuff like that. <laughs> so we're going to teach you how to achieve it. Uh, and then we'll take a virtual field trip out to Canva itself to teach you how to set up a brand and a branded template in Canva. All right. So give us the not even 10 cent tour. Give us the very basics of what is Canva and what people are using it for. Sure. I mean, basically, and I can say this with total confidence, it is the easiest graphic design tool you'll ever see. And you can use it on any device. Uh, they have an app for mobile devices. You go to canva.com if you're on a computer. And you can design just about anything you want, uh, from business cards, the flyers, the brochures, the postcards, 
to your social media posts and ads, animations, even videos now, and a whole lot more. You can even design your logos in here. You can really design anything you want in Canva. Uh, and the beautiful part about Canva is, one, it does have uh, the ability for you to upload your own imagery, your own logos, your own pictures, whatever you need to. Plus, it has a gigantic library of copyright-safe design templates you can work off of. Uh, pictures you could use out of the library, icons, text stickers, graphics, fonts, and a lot more. And by the way, if you have a free Canva account, some of these things are free, some are paid, and if they're paid, they're usually just a dollar. You're not talking about spending a ton of money if you don't have a paid account. If you have what's called Canva Pro, pretty much everything in here is free. You don't have to worry about, you know, am I picking a premium picture or a free picture Everything, yeah, once you have Canva Pro, everything in the library is automatically included, plus a bunch of other additional pro features. And in the masterclass next week, we're really going to dig into what you can do for free and what you can do with the pro. The pro really does have some amazing extra tools. It really, really does. So again, Canva is such an amazing, easy to use tool, which is why it's so popular. Um, and the best part is really those... Um, those templates that are already in Canva, Canva has an amazing team of graphic designers, professionals that work for them that design new templates all the time in every category. So if you want to go and design a flyer or a social media post, there's a huge library of beautiful templates to choose from, and you just kind of click and make the little changes you need to make off of professionals' templates. What we're going to show you in this uh, session is you could either take one of those existing templates that's already in there for Canva and make it your own and make your own branded template, or you could design your own from scratch. You can go either way. But the beautiful part of Canva is, again, it's so easy to use. Plus, there's already templates in there to work off of, and then it makes it very hard for you to screw up. So we're going to teach you how to create your own branded templates. And that way, every single time you want to do a social media post, it has a consistent look and feel. And if you want to create a postcard, it can have the same look and feel as your social media post and your business cards and yard signs and so on. So that's what we mean by a branded template, where you're building a kind of a template of your own that has your look, your feel, your colors, your picture, your logo, everything you need in there. Okay, awesome. so that's what we're gonna teach you how to do in this session today. Absolutely. So kind of moving on. Yeah, so what I was gonna say here, Craig, is um, this is something where when we talk about branded templates, there are a certain set of items that go into creating your brand. Um, I've written some extensive articles on this uh, over at agentinnercircle.com, um, but this is something that we talk about with a lot of different folks and something we're going to show you today on how to set up all of these different things. But we want to at least give you an outline of what sort of things you absolutely need when you're setting up your brand to begin with, before you even dive into Canva to make sure it's the easy experience, easiest experience um, that you can possibly have. So a lot of folks will know about, say, the color palette and the style, right? That's sort of the basics. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to show you how to easily do that. But there are a couple items that we want to make sure that you don't miss or you think about consistently whenever you're trying to create these sort of templates for yourself. The second one is probably the biggest mistake that I see all the time, and that's font. Yep. Um, in fact, I had somebody recently send me a professionally done brokerage brand kit that was like, oh, I need to do something for my brand. I, I'm, I'm working on something, and an agent sends me um, this item. And I look, and, and in this like 12-page brand kit, they not once talk about font and what font to use right. and what all of that sort of stuff. Um, and we're going to talk about fixed element shapes, uh, designations. What we mean by that is if your pictures all are round throughout most of your designs, and then all of a sudden they're square, that inconsistency can really switch up and, and mix up a brand. Um, consistent imagery being your picture, picture, your company logo, but even the types of photos of houses or, or the area yep. or things like that that you're taking, you want them to look similar to one another. Um, and then last year, personal and team logo. And that's funny to me that we always list this last because I feel like everybody wants to put that first. They want to put, oh, I need a logo as my A number one. But the reality is you need all of these items and, and to be happy with all of the items before you go and create a logo using those items. So we're going to give you some uh, tools today to very, very 
easily do that and easily set up um, all of that for yourself and uh, and then how to brand it and bring it over into Canva. So, Craig, you want to go into uh, creating your color palette and, and how that works for Absolutely. folks? Yep. So first thing is, um, if you do need to figure out a very sp uh, a specific color, let's say you work with a company, you're like, their logo is red, but you don't know what color red it is. So this is a free tool called ColorZilla. It's what's called a browser extension. You just install it into your browser, and it's like a little color dropper. So you can then just click on that little browser extension, move over the logo, and then figure out exactly what color red the red is. Uh, and by the way, if you do have Canva Pro, which again, that's the paid version of Canva, not the free version, if you upload a logo, Canva would immediately tell you what the colors are in that logo and in those pictures. Uh, but for free, if you don't have Canva Pro, you could use the ColorZilla browser extension to figure that out. So that's our first thing is how to figure out what a color is if you need to. Is that was that helpful? Okay, I got to ask everybody here. Let us know in chat. Was that helpful? Have you found yourself stuck finding colors before and go, oh, that's a really cool thing I can add onto my browser? Uh, if that's helpful, let us know. Drop a like. We uh, we definitely appreciate and want the feedback from everybody. Yep. All right. The next tool we're going to show you is, uh, I think it's called, I, I pronounce it colors, but it's really coolers. Or, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce this puppy. Uh, but it's a really cool, smart tool. And what it allows you to do is you can also figure out entire color palettes that go with a color. So let's just say we just found out the red of that company logo, right? We go to colors, we lock it into the first one. You just kind of put it in, click the lock icon. And now we can kind of find out what complementary colors go with that company's red. And that all you got to do is hit your space bar. And each time it rotates in different colors that go with that color. And they use uh, some science and some algorithm to figure out what colors go with it. Uh, in a complimentary way. So I just found a white, kind of a off-white, kind of a snow color that I like. I'll lock that one. That block color, I like that one. I'm going to lock that one in. And I'm going to try to find like a silver color that goes with it as well. And now I have my whole color palette I can use with this company's logo. Pretty cool, okay. isn't it? So, yep. I saw somebody give it a, a love, right? And that's the beauty of it is now we can build an actual color scheme for all of our marketing that goes with our company logo. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Karen. I uh, greatly appreciate that. Um, we, uh, we definitely appreciate that. So thank you. Um, one of the other things that I love about colors and this tool that I just want to bring up, first of all, it's free. So you don't have to worry about paying a whole bunch yep. of money for it. Uh, the other thing is that you can create multiple palettes. So if you're working on different projects, if you're working on different designs, if you're doing things like that, you can save a whole bunch of palettes behind the scenes and then come back to them, save them as images, export them to other people. Um, it's a really, really great place to keep all of your different color sets that you might be working through uh, or working with your graphics on. So definitely yep. one of my favorite yeah, tools. And, yeah, and by the way, not to beat a dead horse, but this is also another feature included in Canva Pro. So if you do have the paid version, Canva Pro would also help you create color palettes as well. I wonder how many Canva Pro accounts we've sold, considering we're not I know, right? we're not reps <laughs> and we have no like no stake, nothing on it. Um, all right. So last uh, we'll talk or not. I shouldn't say last, but next thing we'll talk about a little bit more here is your font um, yep. and uh, creating, you know, a great font, designing a great font. Um, Craig, do you want to? sort of go through fonts a little bit more as well? Sure. I mean, fonts really do kind of project an image of a business a lot. Like Alex talked about, it's kind of crazy when sometimes that company brand uh, kit doesn't include the font because if your fonts are inconsistent, it really takes away from a consistent look. So this is a site called myfonts.com, and then they have a feature on there called What the Font. And all you gotta do is, if you like a certain company's logo or the fonts they use in their logo, you can upload it and then this site will immediately tell you what fonts they're using. And there's even a, like the ability if you want that font to either go and buy it if you don't have the access to that font or download it if it's a free font. Um, but just to kind of figure out what font is this company using that you like, this is a great tool. And, and even if you don't wanna use the upload tool, there is a whole library you can just kind of look through all the different fonts that are out there and see oh, yeah. you find one you really like. One of the other uh, really popular things I like with the myfonts.com 
is they also have a section of popular fonts um, yep. where you can go through and see what people have been using lately, um, what's you know trending in terms of font, what styles have sort of gone out and are considered a little bit old versus styles that are new in terms of fonts. So it makes it very, very easy to find, pick, and make sure that your fonts are current and match your brand um, accordingly. Anything else you want to cover with fonts? Um, I mean, just, I mean, main thing is I can tell you when you're designing a logo, um, you always want to think to, about, to me, a couple things. One is a good logo should look good in both orientations, meaning both vertical and horizontal. Um, so you always do want to think about that. You know, if you have a limited space and it has to be horizontal, you know, a vertical display, is it still going to look good? And another cardinal sin a lot of people make with their uh, logos is either too thin of fonts or too light of a color where it doesn't stand out. Yep. Um, so color comes into play as well. And the font size and thickness comes in. Uh, but like we said, it really does, again, reinforce your brand when you have a strong logo with strong fonts. Absolutely. And a lot of times you want to create those fonts before you're creating your logo and get comfortable with them before that. Cause we see it all the time. People mm -hmm. use a font, uh, especially a script type font. Um, oh, they're so hard to read where usually. people use the uh, script type font in their logo and then try to make that cater to the content on their website and on their business cards and on their, all of that sort of stuff. And it just doesn't, it doesn't really work that well. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind, not against signature fonts in general, you can do them and can do a good job with them, but they're a little more tricky. Uh, and you want to make sure that whatever that signature type font is, it works well in the rest of the content that you're going to be putting it out in, um, and not just yeah. for the logo. And, and let me also throw one thing on top of that. Um, when it comes to things like web, anything on the internet, websites, social media, whatever, there is a small group of fonts that are called web safe, web safe fonts. Um, and if you go off that list and cr find a crazy font nobody's ever heard of before, especially like a script type font, you won't be able to use that on your website or on your social media post, whatever. You could use it in images, your logo, but you will not be able to use it in the middle of text if it's not a what's called a web safe font. So that's another thing just to kind of take into account. If you're trying to maintain that look and it's not an image, you might want to also look at that website, website font list. Absolutely. The other thing uh, there, Craig, and we should have mentioned this back in the colors section, but there is such mm -hmm. thing as web safe colors. Um, yep. if websites, browsers, etc., the same way they do with fonts don't necessarily correctly portray 100% of the colors that are in the spectrum uh, in even what your monitor may represent. So when you're picking colors, using a tool like uh, the colors.co or the Adobe Color Wheel or any of the, the tools that are out there, they give you the opportunity to make sure those colors are safe um, and will be represented across web browsers, across you know everything um, yep. equally. Which actually reminds me of one thing I didn't, I probably need to throw this into the slide deck for the next time, um, but I'll put this into the chat, um, is there's sites like Web AIM, um, and if you guys aren't familiar with that, ADA compliance um, has become a major issue in everything. Um, and when it comes to color blindness and color contrast, that comes into play with your logo. So if your logo um, doesn't pass the colorblind test, you can get sued for your logo. So I just threw a link into the chat um, for you guys, a little ADA checker for color variation yep. um, that you could use if you are concerned with the colors you're using, if they'll pass ADA. That's a great suggestion there, Craig. I appreciate you putting that in. Re really great. Yep. Um, yeah, absolutely. So there are a lot of considerations to uh, play in here. Um, but there are some folks where, and some options in terms of doing your logos now that we're getting into that section. So once you've figured out your color, your font, your brand, how that's really going to look, now it's time to do a logo. Um, there are some options out there for it. Um, Craig, what's your take on these? Cause I'm, I'm back and forth on this. I mean, to me, first of all, logos, um, really are important. Um, and I kind of gave you the you pay, you could pay someone else or do it yourself. Now, the truth is if you'd use the pay it yourself like Fiverr, 
the model of Fiverr is somebody will do anything for five bucks an hour. Now, could you get <laughs> someone to, uh, let's say, design a social media post for you for five bucks or to edit your video? Sure, you could. When it comes to logo design with Fiverr, you kind of get what you pay for. You're probably going to get square shapes on regular aerial fonts on a site like Fiverr when it comes to logo design. Um, same thing with Canva. Even though Canva does have build-it-yourself kind of logo design, I mean, they, again, are a little bit templated, yep. which is, you know, how things work. The, the other um, thing if about... If you need really good logo design, I usually recommend 99designs. Yeah, I, me personally. I, was, I was in that same boat, Craig. And, and I did want to give people a warning about trying to do logos in Canva because we get this question a lot. Um, Canva is not meant to create logos. Uh, no, when it's not. when you create a logo, you are what you're trying to do is put something into what is called a vector design. And what that means is for the very basics of it means that I can take a logo and I can shrink it down to as small as it can possibly be, or I can blow it up to as big as I want it and put it on a billboard. And no matter what size I make it, that logo is not going to become pixelated and have problems and so on as it scales to different sizes. Canva yep. is not a tool that does that. Um, Canva is a tool that is meant for graphic design, for imagery, for things like that. Um, and it is not meant to build stuff that is a vector. So if, if you do want a logo design, um, Canva is great once you have a logo, but it's not necessarily the best place to do a logo because you're not going to end up with the type of graphic that you can then use absolutely everywhere you need it to. Um, it might yeah. be okay Wait. for the meantime, but it's not going to be a long-term solution for you. Yeah, which is why I recommend 99designs. Everything Alex said is 100% accurate, but beyond that, again, a site like Fiverr is going to be a templated logo design, even if they kick you out of vector. Um, 99designs, their starting price is $99. Uh, and then you're working with what is more considered much more of a high-end true graphic designer who's going to give you original logo design packages. Um, so, you know, you're going to find a template designer on Fiverr. You're going to find a graphic artist on 99 design. So I usually, if something like true original logo design, I should say it's worth that hundred bucks. Just go to a site like 99 designs. Absolutely. So, um, now that we've talked a little bit about the logo, the next is talking about sort of the consistency of the design. And I know this is something that you get into a lot, Craig. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, it's based, and by the way, we're going to, once we get into showing you how to do these things in Canva, I would say this is where you knock these things out. Because in other words, you want to have, you want each one of your social media posts to have a consistent look and feel. You want your, yeah, you know, if you're doing postcards to have the same look and feel as those social media posts and so on. And a great way to do that is creating these branded templates and then locking certain imagery. So in other words, if you want to make it where your profile picture is always in the bottom left corner and then you have a bar coming out of it with your name and your and your phone number or whatever, and that's consistent on everything, that's where we're going to help you create these branded templates and lock those elements. And what we mean by lock an element is once you create a template and you say lock my profile picture in the left corner, it'll always be in the left corner everything you create from that point on. So you're making it so that you always will have this consistent look by adding in these kind of elements and imagery into it and then locking them. Absolutely. All right, so I think we've pretty much covered uh, sort of the overview of some of these Canva features, some of the things you can do to set up your brand. Is it time to, to take a, a quick trip over, Craig? Might as well. All right, just share your screen if you would. Sure thing. All right, there we go. Sweet. All right. Well, we've got your screen share up. We are ready to go. So let's uh, let's show folks how to create those branded templates you're okay. talking about. So the first thing is just to put this out there. I do have a pro account, a paid Canva account, which is twelve bucks a month. Okay. Now again, I don't have to worry about ever paying for a picture, paying for a song, paying for a video. Everything in the library is automatically included. And there's a lot of extra features that you get in Canva Pro versus the basic Canva. Um, so one of the things I'm about to show you is called Brand Kit. And Brand Kit is only available in Canva Pro. Just putting that out there just so you guys know. 
So if you have a free version of Canva, you wouldn't be able to do this. Now, by the way, if you go to BrandKit, you will not see this ridiculous list of the logos like I have, okay? Because most realtors I know have one logo, right? You have your company, maybe you have your, your team logo, whatever. Um, because of what I do, speaking with so many different associations and events, I've got a ton of logos in my brand kit. Um, but usually you would just have maybe one or two logos in here if it's just you. Uh, but the beauty of, um, of brand kit is when I come down here, you can see it down to the bottom. Anytime I upload a logo, it is creating the color scheme for that logo. It automatically pulls the colors out of it and tells me here are the colors used in that logo. So for example, my company, RATI, it has this blue, the gray, and the silvers in our logo. It automatically created that. I didn't have to do a thing. I uploaded a Remax logo, and here's the Remax colors logos pulled out automatically. And by the way, if I want to add another color in, I could always go and say, okay, let's add purple into here, whatever I want to do to add another color into this uh, company's profile. But I can add as many of these as I want. And then when I said that a lot of what colors does uh you know and all these other programs if i say add and discover palettes it's kind of do very similar to what we did in colors where i can just say okay let's find a color palette that's popular and all goes together oh this one's really cool this in the blue kind of has like a a beachy kind of a feel to it i'll pick that one okay uh and then over on the right here is where I can go also go in and define my different fonts, sizes, and colors. So I can say if anything's going to be a header, like the major header at the top of an advertisement, I want it to be this font in this size and this weight. If I, anything that's a subheader, I want to make it this size and this weight. Anything that's going to be regular body copy, this size and this weight and this font type. And I can also upload fonts if I do have any custom fonts I want to add into the library. So I can do all this under brand kit in a pro account. That's one thing. But then the really cool thing is once you go and design something, uh, and this is just an example. Let me just make a quick copy of this one. Okay. Over on the left here, now I have a button called styles. And right now this is, we're using this Palmer house style. And all I got to do is click on it. And each time I do, it redesigns it based on the colors in their logo. So as you can see, it just maybe now became a major league gold background instead of a blue background. And if there's something I don't like, like right now this logo is now very hard to see, I could always come in and change that. Okay, But I could just quickly keep clicking on this and redesigning it each time and get a different look each time I do it. Okay, So it makes it very quick and easy once you create a uh, this whole color styles where you can just redesign it. If I want to all of a sudden change this to the Remax colors, boom, there it is. Immediately now it's in the Remax colors. So it's very easy once you create your color schemes to redesign inside of Canva by using the styles button and just click and shuffle each time. Okay, and you can see these are really pretty impactful things we're designing here. And then the other part of creating templates is as I mentioned, once you create one design that you like, you can lock elements. So let's just say I always want my profile picture in the bottom left corner. I can just click on the picture, go up to the top where there's this little a lock icon in the top right corner, and I can say lock it. And now the profile picture will always be anchored right there in that left corner. If I like this little white bar that I created back here, right, that has all the content info uh, in front of it, I can lock that as well. Oops, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong one there. So we'll lock that. Okay, now we're going to lock. Actually, I don't like that color for her font, so let's change that to that blue instead. And now let's lock her contact info. And now we're going to lock the logo itself. Okay. And now if I want to make a copy of this ad anytime I want, boom, I can't change any of this. It is now locked where I can't make these changes. So now I have a template every time I want to make a new social media post for a new listing. So if I have a different listing, I can come in here and change this to 1042 or 41, whatever. Helps when I can spell. 
West Tuscany, and we'll make this. Okay. And just to kind of like quickly show you, we're just going to put a different picture in the background. We'll find a different house. Okay, we just made a social media post for, actually this is a postcard, not a social media post, but for a different property sold in seconds, and because we've locked this, I can't go in and change any of it. Consistent look and feel, I've now created a template for a postcard. Does this all make sense, guys? Are any questions on it? Is this and by helpful? the way, I can do the exact same thing in anything else. If I want to go, let's say, go back to... Let's I want to now go create instead a, oh, we'll do a flyer. Karen says, yes, helpful. Awesome. That's great to hear. Thank you, Karen. We really appreciate folks giving feedback and being interactive with us here. Yeah. So I'm going to create a real estate flyer, guys. Um, and let's just grab this one really quickly. So now I'm working off a free template that Canva provided me, right? And now I can just come in here, click on styles, redesign it. No, it's pulling in that purple because I picked the purple. But now we've quickly redesigned this in the Remax colors. And I can just very quickly, if I wanted to, I'm just going to show you this really fast. I'm just going to quickly grab this from this other design, copy it. I'm going to get rid of all this fake info at the bottom here. Oops, actually, I didn't want to get rid of that blue background. Oops, that didn't work the way I wanted. They're all locked. That's true. I'd have to unlock it to copy it. Yep. That's why. Good call. That's so good. So I'm just going to quickly unlock it just so I can copy it. Boom. Just that easy. Okay. We, and by we, the way, I know this is kind of zoomed out. We'll just kind of zoom in really quickly and show you. Now we've got a consistent look and feel for our flyer. That's yep. very similar to the social media post. So one thing right. we covered. Um, one okay. thing we covered last week in this. Uh, Craig, well, Craig couldn't join us last week, but one thing we covered last week is doing a very similar thing between your listing presentations and your um, like pre-appointment package. So one of the best ways mm -hmm. to to go on a listing is to uh you know send some sort of pre-appointment package for the listing. Um you send that package and you've got to make it look similar to your listing presentation. So if you set up your whole listing presentation, you can easily take pieces from this, move it right over uh into a flyer or a report or things like that and then easily have something that is branded the exact same way um across yep. everything. Yeah, but you can see how quickly and easy I just made a flyer. Of course, I'd want to go in and edit the information about the property. But once I create one, you now can save this as a... And by the way, this is one of the also really cool things. If you share this, okay, and then say, use this as a template, what it means is you could always reuse it at any time. So once you create something and you get the look and feel that you like, you click on share, share link to use as a template, and then you could even give it out to somebody else on your team so they have the exact same look as you. So if you're a broker owner or a manager of a team or a company, you can make one template and have everyone in the company have the same look and feel for all their posts and all their flyers and everything else just by saving them as a template. Pretty sweet, isn't it? Super helpful. Yep. Absolutely.
All right, any questions, anybody? While we're uh, while we're diving through this here. All right. Well, we're going to give it a minute here for questions. Uh, Craig, is there anything else you want to take folks through within branded templates and setting those up today? Um, not that I really can think off the top of my head. Just that, um, again, if you're just doing this for yourself, you could always just make a copy of a previous one you did. But if you are trying to uh, uh, like give it out to other people, like people on your team or on your company, then you just go to share, save as a template, and then you, all you got to do is send people a link. And let me just kind of give you an example. This is a brochure that I give out in all my classes. Okay, It's the 184 things a realtor does to earn a commission. And I just shared it as a template and give this link out to all my students. And that way they can go in very quickly and add in their own picture, their own contact info, and have the list of everything a realtor does. Love it. You know what I mean? So, so we, got, we got a this, couple questions. You the exact same thing with your anything. Yep. So we got a couple questions coming in. Uh, Tamara says, yep. is there a special way to save as a template? So you mind going through that one more time, Craig? Sure. Again, if you're going to, if it's just for yourself, you don't really need to share as a template. I could just find a design that I like, hit the duplicate button and make a second copy of it. And by the way, you can have it up to a hundred in a screen. So I could do this for the next 99 listings is keep copying this one and making the changes up to a hundred. Okay, um, so if it's just for yourself, you don't, don't really need to make a template. You could always lock the things you want to lock and just make a duplicate of it. Okay, um, when it comes to sharing to other people, that's when you want to go up to share. And then you click this little drop down. Instead of saying share link to edit, you say share link to use as a template. And then you say copy the link and you send, and you email or text out that link to other people. So we got a perfect segue here, Craig, because there's there's a couple of things. So first, we got Karen who asks, when is the master class on Canva? Great question. Um, but I, I want to I'm going to tease something quick here first before I say exactly when it is. Uh, I put a link in chat as well if you are interested in the master class. But one thing we are doing now that you're talking about templates, Craig, is we are going to be giving away uh, access to templates uh, as part of the master class. So if um, if you are joining, if you do pay for the masterclass, um, you will get a number of templates already ready to go from us that you can go use immediately uh, in your for business. Social media, for video, for postcard. Yep, absolutely. Now, uh, the Canva masterclass is 830. So next Monday um, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern. Now, I do want to mention that if you are unable to attend, during that time slot, um, you will have access to the replay if you get tickets early. Um, we're not selling the replay later. We're not doing a lot of that stuff. So if you do get tickets before the event, you'll have access to the replay and all of those bonuses. Um, but not if you don't. <laughs> so uh, make sure <laughs> that you get in early, uh, get your tickets early. And that um, I'll mention as well, uh, if you sign up today, um, you will still have access to the early access pricing. So you can save yourself $10 uh, on the ticket. It is normally $34.99. Up until today, it is $24.99. So if you get that done by today uh, and get tickets by today, then you are set to go. Um, save yourself $10 and uh, end up with a whole bunch of templates and a whole bunch of tools in your tool belt that allow you to very quickly and easily design um, some wonderful marketing for your business without having to pay a whole bunch of money for a professional designer. Yeah, I mean, the reality is, and we teach you what you could use in Canva for free and what, and if you want to consider getting Canva Pro, if you go Canva free, it's completely free to use. Just every once in a while, you might pay a dollar every once in a while for a picture or a video clip you want. Uh, if you go with Canva Pro, again, it's $12 a month. And then there are no additional costs you have to worry about. It's not like you're ever going to get nickel and dime. For anything else, and there are a lot of extra cool features in Canva Pro we didn't have time to cover today, which we will cover in the master class. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a really hands on type of class where you're going to walk away uh, with all the skills that you need to do everything um, to create a lot of your own marketing. Yep. So, 
All right. Um, well, I got the uh, Canva Masterclass up on the screen here. Uh, we have it as a link in the chat as well. So if folks are interested, definitely head on over there and get your tickets. Um, but while we're doing that, I do want to mention one more time the two groups that put this on. Uh, first is RETI.US, the Real Estate Technology Institute. Uh, Craig is the founder over there. I'm also an instructor. And uh, if you're interested mm -hmm. in anything to do with uh, learning technology or marketing in your business, definitely check that out. Um, also, Service for Life, that's my organization. Uh, Service for Life has been helping agents for over 20 years get to a point in their business where they are doing referral um, and repeat business. And it is easy. I mean, we're talking like 90 seconds to two minutes a month um, to do that. So uh, you'd be amazed uh, what we can do. And uh, definitely check out Service for Life at uh, serviceforlife.com. Um, Everyone who has joined today, we greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, let us know if you found this helpful. Uh, let us know if this was good information. You're going to go use this in your business. And we would really appreciate dropping a like on the video itself, as well as on the Facebook page. Um, make sure you hit that follow as well. So you're going to get notifications from us and you know when we go live with more content like this.